Hi and welcome to this edition of What Do I Need? These have been really popular and today we're going to look at another regular request which is what do I need to run a Ubiquiti Unify Protect network? Quite a mouthful already but what is it? Ubiquiti Unify Protect, um, often just called Protect, is Ubiquiti's closed circuit television, CCTV, video surveillance solution, whatever you'd like to call it. The cameras we're going to mount outside or inside they are going to give us the ability to view them whether we're in the property or remotely. So it could be for work or for home, it could be to uh, look out on your driveway or to an area of your garden that's not visible very much, maybe even a camera to watch over your swimming pool when the children are in there to make sure that they're safe. Maybe in a business it's going to be looking at your point of sales where your tills are, um, or maybe in a cafe in the cooking area to make sure everything's done correctly, or to check that visitors to your business are doing what they should do. That is what Unify Protect is here for. Now, you're going to need several components to make this work and we are going to go through them step by step. Firstly, you're going to need what's called a NVR, a network video recorder. We're going to talk about that a little bit more, but that's the bit that's actually going to store all of your information um, and allow you to view that remotely or go back in time and have a look at it. You're then going to need a bunch of cameras. Those cameras are going to be different for each situation that you have. Are they going to be outside in uh, full weather so they're going to rain, moisture, all of those type of things? Are they inside? Do they need to be ceiling mounted? Uh, do you need to be able to talk back through them? So there are a number of things in there that you need to consider and we have a whole bunch of those different cameras on our website. You're also going to then need a network switch to connect all of this equipment together and send power over Ethernet to the cameras. Power over Ethernet is the ability to take mains power and add in your data, i.e. from your camera, and put it down one Ethernet cable. We've done another video on what Power over Ethernet is, so do watch that if you're not sure. These sections are going to be about the network switch you need to connect this all together. So those are the three things, the NVR, the uh, cameras that you need, and also the switch. So let's look at that first thing that you need, the network video recorder, the NVR. So the specification for this or what you're going to require is going to depend on how many cameras, the quality of those cameras and how long you need to keep the footage for. This is a ubiquity range so you can't use other cameras with it, you can't use net other network video recorders with it. It all has to be from the ubiquity range. So there are three primary NVRs at the moment. So let's have a look at those. The first one is this. This is the Cloud Key Generation 2 Plus, the UCK G2 Plus. This has a small hard drive inside here um, that is one terabyte in size. It can be upgraded by you. You can buy a second, a new hard drive, take the old one out of here, put a five terabyte hard drive in it. This is probably good for maybe about seven or eight cameras, certainly I would say less than 10 cameras. It's got a fairly slow hard drive in here. So if you're storing a lot of data quickly, it's going to struggle. So this is the starting point. This can run your Unify controller and your Unify Protect and actually now the new Unify access system as well, which is for door access and things like that. So this is a great starting point, less than 10 cameras. And look, if you're going to have 10 cameras, this is probably going to one terabyte hard drive in there. It's probably going to be good for a few weeks of stored footage. If you need longer, then do upgrade that to a five terabyte. So that's a good starting point for you. Then one of the next popular things people are doing is actually called the UDM, the, the Unified Dream Machine, uh, the Pro model, um, which is this uh, dude here. All right, it's got a small eight port switch, doesn't provide power over ethernet, but it does have a hard drive bay in here. So actually in this device you get a security appliance, you get the cloud key, generation two, you get a hard drive, and um, we've got people in that are putting 14 terabyte hard drives into here. So a single 14 terabyte, loads of storage, it's a three and a half inch, you can put a two and a half inch in there, but it's a three and a half inch drive, um, and that will obviously spin up at a good speed, depending on how much money you spend on it, um, and that's a good way to get loads of storage. Remember the cloud key, generation two, max five terabytes. This at the moment, um, 14 terabytes, probably potentially get 18 terabytes and larger hard drives in there in due course. So the UDM Pro is really great. Only one single hard drive, so if you have a failure, that hard drive's gone, you've lost all of your footage. 
but obviously this probably is a better starting point if you've maybe got at least 10 cameras and you're wanting good over a month, month and a half of footage, then this allows you to scale up the hard drive. So a great next stage of what you can use. Then we move up to dedicated devices. This here, this is the UNVR, the Ubiquiti Network Video Recorder. It's got four bays on here, one, two, three, four. Again, you can have, uh, officially it's an eight terabyte hard drive in each, um, but you can, we've got customers again that are running 14 terabyte hard drives and larger. Um, they run in what's called RAID 5, so three usable drives, one is there as a spare, it's written to as part of the action. So if you had three 13, 14 terabyte hard drives in there, um, whatever you've got on there, it's quite a large um, amount of storage space, 32 terabytes, something like that, um, of storage space. This is now, this is more where you're going to get to if you are looking for, you know, 25, 30 cameras with um, scalable um, storage um, for over a month, two months lengths in time. There is actually a pro model of that, which is twice as deep. It's got seven drive bays in it, uh, gives you a fantastic um, longevity for what you can actually store. But obviously there is a few little things with this that you can help. Um, the whole program itself, the Unify Protect program, has something called smart detections in it um, and motion detection. Smart detections um, are currently detecting cars and people. So you can tell it, for instance, here's a space that I would like you to monitor. Maybe it's your driveway. Um, and if there's a car or a person, then record and record, say, 10 seconds before, 10 seconds after the action. That obviously cuts down the amount of storage space that you need for a long term. Motion sensors do the same, but you just need to make sure if you've got um, trees in there that are moving quite a lot, they can set those motion sensors off. So your footage is going to vary. We have G3 cameras, which are 1080p, so high definition, and we have G4 cameras, uh, which are 4K, a larger uh, format. So your storage space will depend on the number of cameras and the length of storage and the quality of those cameras. But those are the three things that you've got. You've got the Cloud Key Generation 2 Plus as a starting point. You've got the UDM Pro as a really good middle ground, very popular. And then if you're serious and wanna move up to doing some serious stuff, then the UNVR is really scalable for you. So hopefully that's helped you with this section. That is what you need to start with. The core of all of this is the NVR, the Network Video Recorder. Now we're gonna look at the cameras. Before we head off into the cameras, there's one simple thing to look at first. How do I actually view what I've recorded on the Network Video Recorder? So none of these devices have an HDMI or a monitor output, not on the G2 um, there, the Plus, um, or the UDM or the UNVR. So you are gonna to need to use a web browser or you can use the app, there you go, I've got it running on uh, there for you. That is all the footage that I have uh, at our office. So I can use an app on my mobile phone to view uh, events that have happened, to do live time, I can talk back uh, through it, and we'll talk about some of the other cameras in a minute that have that functionality in it. I can use a web browser from my computer, um, whether I'm out and about or whether I'm inside the property, to view it, and I can leave it running on a monitor if I wanted it running all the time, or I can use something uh, like the Ubiquiti Viewport. That has an HDMI connector on one side and an Ethernet cable on the other. It's PoE powered. It will automatically connect to your UNVR um, and display the images from all your cameras to how, depending on how you've set it up, onto a monitor. So you could plug that in to your second output or input, sorry, of your uh, TV in your lounge room and you could flick to that and you'd be able to see all of your cameras. There is in fact an app I think that runs on Apple TV um, and a few of the Android devices as well. So you can't plug a monitor directly into the NVR, but you can use various apps to make it work. Now let's talk about the camera. There are so many different choices and they are all about the application that you want them for. So let's start at something that's just been released. This is the doorbell. All right, it's a doorbell. People say, well, it's a camera. This still needs the Unify Protect system to run. This has got a 4K, a high definition camera in it. It will do smart detection of cars and people. It will alert you with a push notification on your phone if Somebody has walked up to the door before they've even pushed the doorbell. If they push the doorbell, it will also notify you. There's a message screen at the bottom where you can send people messages back. It has a light underneath it. 
You can even use the app on your laptop or on your mobile phone, like I've shown you, to have a two-way conversation with them as well. They all need uh, the Unify Protect system and an MVR to make it work, but that's the starting point, if you like, of one of the cameras. Then we get on to larger, more requirements, or depending on what you're actually wanting to do with the system. There is a G3 Flex, for instance. It's a small device that's designed to either stand on your desk or to be ceiling mounted, half of it hidden away, so maybe you use that in an office space. We've used this as public venues, places where they want to watch the tills, all of those types of things. Maybe you've got a portico and it could fit recessed in there. It's not really weather tight, but that could work for you. Um, it's a high definition, it's a 1080p camera, could work well. I'm not gonna go through all the cameras, we can give you some ideas, you'll see all of this on our website. Um, here is one of the top of the range currently, this is the G4 Pro, this has got a three time optical zoom in it. Um, it's fully weather tight, it will sit outside for you, it has a massive angle of view, um, it has infrared detection for nighttime, um, so long distance view um, and fantastic um, storage features, options for marking out certain parts of what it can see for motion detection. Again, all streamed back. Um, then we maybe have got something like um, a G4 Dome. This actually has a microphone in it, much the same as the doorbell does. Um, and a couple of the other models, and that allows you to talk back to whoever you've seen on the screen. So that really is it. You've got to choose the right camera, talk to us, review some of our frequently asked questions, have a look at the models. You can mix and match. Uh, there's a new G3 Instant coming, which is a tiny little wireless device, but all of these do generally need to have an ethernet cable connected to them. It's gonna carry their data and it's gonna carry their wireless. Oh, sorry, no, wire, their power. Why do I say it's better to have an ethernet cable? Simple, you are transferring megabits a second of data from this. Wireless still isn't at a point that it's reliable. And if you're using this for surveillance, you're using this to see who's around, the last thing you want is for the Wi-Fi to be flaky for it to drop out and not have any footage. So I would always ethernet cable uh, what I have for my cameras um, because I believe it's going to give you the better result. So hopefully for that sec this section that has helped you. All right, we've now done the MVRs and now we've just talked about the cameras and how uh, to view it. All right, so in this last section we just want to talk about switching because we've done the NVR, we've done the cameras and now we've just got to connect all of this together. All right, so we do need a PoE switch. That's the ideal way of doing it. We can connect each of these cameras with an injector, but obviously if we've got 10 cameras, we're gonna have 10 main sockets that we're gonna to need to use and then 10 ethernet cables to run out. All right, so it doesn't really matter. You're gonna to need to spec this up so it has enough PoE ports and enough PoE power. So this little device, this is the usw light 8 poe uh, It only has four PoE ports and it has a maximum power outage of 40 watts. Now one of these big cameras, this G4 Pro, is probably gonna use about 15 or a little bit more watts, especially when it's got infrared running on at nighttime. So you imagine really only able to connect two of those to a switch like this. So this is okay if you've just got a couple of cameras, but do maybe look at something like the US-8-150 watt. So eight ports of 150 watt in total power. That's gonna give you enough to maybe get six or seven cameras on there. Remember, you're gonna have your switch, each of your cameras is going to be cabled to your switch. That switch is also going to need to be cabled to your NVR, so your uh, cloud key. In this instance, this is PoE powered, so it's going to need another port to power it. Or you're going to connect it to your UDM Pro or your NVR, so you're going to need a port for that. And then you're going to need a port from this to your uh, router. Now, you don't have to have it connected to the internet to make all of this work, but obviously if you do want to review your footage from outside of your property, then you are going to need to give all of this internet access. So you need to make sure. So read the specifications, make sure you've got enough PoE ports. For instance, this is an eight port switch, but only four of them are PoE. And like I said, only 40 watts of power. So it's only going to be good for a couple of cameras. So make sure you get the number of watts right for the number of cameras, and make sure you get the number of PoE ports right for what you need to plug into it. So that, all plugged together, will give you a system that runs the Unify Protect. Like I said, you're gonna have an MVR, you're gonna have your various cameras, mix and match them to what, situa what situation you have and how it all works well together. 
connect it all together with a switch or a number of switches. Obviously you can connect one switch to another switch as long as it all connects back and all can see your NVR. You can then use the app on your mobile phone or you can use a web browser on a PC or you can use um, the viewport. You can use an app on a Mac as well, wasn't just making that definition, but you can, or you can use the viewport if you want more of a permanent screen to display. So all of those components together, that's what you need to make a unified protect network run. There's no other software to install, it's already installed on your um, NVR, whichever one you choose, and you just plug in the cameras, and as you plug in the cameras, they all need to be on the same network, you adopt them into the system, and they will start feeding back pictures. You can then use the on-screen configuration um, in your UMVR to be able to map out areas that you wanted to record, how long to record afterwards or um, before an event, how long to store the information, wipe it after a period of time. You have options to go in and lock some footage so that it never gets deleted. It is a fantastic system and hopefully that's given you the three main foundation blocks to make this all work.